In Samoa, they are called tatau. Anyone who get tattooed, if they could survive the pain. In New Zealand, they are known as moko. I've always thought about a moko. I've always wanted a moko. I had made the decision on a Saturday morning and called my mother. And she said, oh no, Manu. She said, just in that tone, if God wanted you to have that, you would have been born with it. And I said to her, well, if God wanted you to have clothes, you would have been born with those as well. In Hawaii, cacao. I asked them a lot of questions to, to try and get into their mind as to what's the purpose of this? Why is it so important for you at this point in time? You know, I was finally ready in his eyes to put one on. In the continental U.S., they are freedom. They definitely had to move to America, get tattoos, ride a Harley, live the American dream, and um, as soon as I was done with high school, that's what I did. Every tattoo has a story. Skin stories. goes on for miles and miles and miles. It's the biggest base in the free world. Basically, the only people we tattoo here are soldiers. They go to war, I go to jail. I don't want to kill anybody. Because I've been there before, I know what happens. I don't have that feeling of invincibility. The more times I go over, the more of Iraq's going to come back with me. Sometimes I wonder, how did I ever get mixed up in all this shit in the first place? Sailor Jerry Collins. Can't beat him. Pure, down-to-earth, tattoo artist. They called him a master of tattooing, and it was true. He took American designs and elaborated on them, made them his own. The standard that you've got to be up with nowadays. Light years ahead of most of the tattooers. The craziness, the wildcat strain. The sea was the overriding thing with Jerry. He relished, of course, macho environment of it, but he loved the Pacific and essentially then stayed home based in Honolulu his entire life. Stewed, screwed, and tattooed. I mean, it was for real. That's what they did. I mean, he's a terrific artist. Oh my God, this guy, you know, he just was pushing the envelope. Wait a minute, tattooing can be like that? The possibilities just started to reel in my mind. Holy. He really got down on the Asian thing. 
he loved so much about Japanese culture, but he still had that memory of World War II. The undercurrent was, we're going to learn this and we're going to beat them at their own game. That's his legacy, is that he sort of lit the torch and began this whole thing because he saw it as something that deserved respect. I think Jerry is one of the most important tattooers of the 20th century. several years after my tattoo. I had surgery, and it's true, you forget it's there. And when I was in the hospital, I had a nurse come in and say to me, I hope the man who did that to you is dead. I hope you killed him. Why would you have allowed somebody to do that? The only thing that she could imagine was that I was tied up, and somebody forcibly did that to me. And I was so stunned. And I said, well, no, actually, I married him. <laughs> Some of the most exhilarating passages in tattoos that I've done, I couldn't even really explain it to people because it's while you're doing it and something occurs and you go, wow, look at that. It's so great the way it is. It's so unexpected, you know. It is like the, the indelible quality, the one-way street. When you start the tattoo, you're going to go through this and get out the other end with it more or less right. That challenge I found to be fantastic, which is the challenge of working with with Sumi, with, you know, ink on paper or silk in the Asian tradition. It ties into that. When you set the brush down, the way, the speed with which you move and how much you have the brush loaded with ink and the, this and that, you get in it and then you go and there, and there it is and there's no go backs. You had to get it right the first time, you know, it was terrific. And, and that was good training too. 